Come now to question number eight in the name of Debbie Nauru Wapaka. Tēnā koe, te pika. And my question is to the Acting Prime Minister. Does he stand by all his government statements and policies? In the same way as we answered for question two and three, and again in question eight. How can he stand by his decision to use parliamentary urgency to push through legislation that will increase unemployment and insecure working conditions while reducing wages when people are trying to survive a cost of living crisis and put more kai on the table for Christmas? Because none of those statements uh, in that so-called question are true, uh, but they are relevant to the inheritance that this government is sadly uh, having to deal with now and desperately before Christmas. And so uh, if they'd have paid more attention to the economy rather than their woke, idiotic, left with the ide ideals, the worker of the workers yeah. of this country would have done far better. But it's been my observation that the Greens and the economies that they admire are all in the third world. Yeah. Point of order uh, for you, please, Eta Pika. <laughs> point, point of order, Tebi Nauru Wapaka. Uh, there are a couple of ones I could bring in, perhaps one to one, um, personal reflections or relevance to debate, one, one, two. I'll leave that up to you, please. Yes, I know, but I could also rule out your su first supplementary because it has suppositions in it. So we do try and get a degree of flow, if at all possible. Uh, but if you just restate your concerns there, because I didn't quite pick up the first one. I think uh, my concerns are that the question uh, for the Deputy Prime Minister wasn't asked, and we also take exception with reference to woke. Those aren't uh, they are personal reflections and they don't belong in this house. <laughs> yes, uh, there's, there's an awful lot of things happen in this house that don't really belong here. So um, <laughs> I think we might just let that one slide. Do you have another supplementary at all? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. What is his justification for repealing fair pay agreements and reducing the wages and conditions of Māori, Pacifica, young people and women, as highlighted by his own government's leaked cabinet paper? Well, first of all, the integrity of the, uh, the person answering this question on the subject of incomes and wages is that that threshold was set in the previous government, not by Labour or the Greens, but by New Zealand First. And we want the working class of this country to get fairly paid, but we want a thing called productivity. And we, we know it's only based on... We know it's, only, it's not nonsense, it's totally true, and I can prove it. I can go back to 2017 and prove that categorically. We know what they campaigned on, so don't come here today and try and tell us what you couldn't do. And at the, at the end of uh, the last three years, the workers of this country were dramatically left down by a failed economy, and our job is to turn that around. And when we do so, will uplift the wages of everybody in this country. Supplementary. Why is this government planning to bring back 90-day trials, which will disproportionately punish tangata whenua, particularly rangatahi, trying to get their foot in the door of the job market, when the research commissioned by the Treasury in 2016 found no evidence that trial periods increase firms' overall hiring, but instead just make it easier for firms to sack people without cause and with fewer dismissal costs? The fact is, if anyone understands economics, a willing business and a willing worker are critical to employment. And so whether it's one month, three months or nine uh, or sorry, one month or two months or three months, the fact of the matter is that the sound connection of those two will work. However, it is our intention as a government to the moment, the moment someone's no longer in work to be on their case to get them back into work. And so the consequences that member's talking about simply will not happen. Honourable Grant Robertson. Members' pride in the minimum wage level. Can he tell the House what the minimum wage is today? Two thirty-three. Twenty-two. Twenty-two seventy. Twenty-two seventy. Am I right? Yeah. No, I didn't ask him. No, I was telling him. I said twenty-two seventy, knowing that I'd have an affirmation on my right from the Minister of Finance and the Leader of the House. Over here, we consult before we open our mouth. True. Uh, Rauri uh, Waititi. He aha tō whakautu. Ki ngā rōpū, e mahi ana, mō ngā tamariki rawa kore, e karanga ana, kia heke te whika o ngā tamariki rawa kore, 
mā te pēne, mā te hiki i te whiwhinga pūtea, mā te ngāwari i te hokokai me te māwiwi ārai. Uh, is, is the member going to translate that, or does he want to give uh, the minister a moment to uh, receive that translation? A point of order, Mr. Speaker. No, it's only, only a question. It wasn't in any kind of a direction. Absolutely not. Okay. You can answer that or not. You can tell me in English, or you can. Uh, well, the uh, the question doesn't need to be answered if the minister doesn't, or prime minister in this case, doesn't feel like he wants to answer it. So, uh, does the minister want to have another supplementary? Question? Mr. Speaker, um, a question. I mean, I guess strictly speaking, your ruling is an order. But the practice in the time I've been in the House is that that is uh, only done when a question is definitively out of order. Um, we have a simultaneous translation system in the House to allow for uh, members to answer. I wonder whether the right course of action here might be for Mr. Waititi to repeat the question and the Acting Prime Minister to use his earpiece for the translation. Speaking, speaking of the Board of Order, well, uh, yeah. we've got a question answered. The I question. just wish the courtesy of the House would apply so that the person asking the question, Mr Speaker, point of order, so that the person asking the question also had the, the comfort that the people who are watching on television also are part of this parliamentary debate. That's what a democracy is called. It's not about, it's not about just about 5%, it's about the other 95% who pay as well. It's called one people, one country. Now back to my point. If the member is concerned, if the member is concerned about the cost of living, no, no, no. On the marae, Megan, you keep quiet. Right? You do. When he knows that, he keeps quiet too. You don't shout out like some bunch of clowns at university. And that member has asked the question; he deserves an answer, and I'll give it to him. If the member is concerned about the cost of living, then that is the greatest concern of this government as well. We went at the last election; it was a massive issue. And just behind it was crime and lawlessness and Maori gangs by the same way. But the cost of living can only be addressed by dealing with the causes of it, and the causes of it are number one centre and the focus of this government going forward. A point of order, Mara well, Was that a point of order? No, that was an answer. He, made he raised it. a point no, of no, order. I'm sorry. He made it. Sorry, hang on. The acting Prime Minister made it very clear when I called him on a point of order, he said, no, it is an answer. And that's how we progress. Debbie no room back. Kia ora. Point of order. Um, with respect to the House and to everyone watching, can we please seek clarity from the Speaker? Are our questions in te reo no longer going to be answered by ministers if they choose not to use the interpreter? That's a, a really important um, subject that we're looking for clarity, please. I can't answer that question for ministers. The provision is made here for... Um, provision is made here for uh, the translation. A minister decides whether or not an answer can be given, and there are very clear outlines and standing orders as to how they might make that decision. Point of order. The questions no have been... The questions were for the Deputy Prime Minister. Mm. So I respect that ministers may choose to do what they want to, but this is a question that would have gone to the Prime Minister, who isn't here. So can I seek clarity again? Is it the Deputy Prime Minister, the Prime Minister or the Government that's making this decision before us today? Because it is a big decision. No, no, no it's, it's not. It's straightforward. Uh, all Ministers are part of the Government, including the Prime Minister, whether they're Acting Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister or a Minister. And it, it is understanding orders very clear how they may or may not answer a question. A, a point of order, uh, Christopher Bishop. Um, thank, you, thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I, I think, in fairness, uh, to, to the uh, members answer, ask, asking the questions. Sometimes the, con, con, the contemporaneous translation service doesn't quite keep up with the asking of the question. So if I could say to members who wish to use Te Reo, uh, when asking questions, if they could perhaps indicate they're about to do so, so that ministers and government uh, respondents can get the uh, translation uh, device, the, the, the hearing equipment, so that the earpiece, so that they can actually listen to the question as it's being asked. Um, that will also help the translator uh, do their job as well, so that we can have the expeditious exchange, um, rather than what we just had. Uh, uh, next in line was Marama Davidson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, 
genuine and important conversation happening right here, are we to believe then, then it simply becomes a choice for a minister to not answer a question, given that te reo is an official language, similarly to New Zealand's signed language. Um, I, I understand the point that Mr Bishop is trying to make that, yes, I'd to be open to the person asking the question to repeat the question so that we all have time to pick up our translators, agree. But are we to understand that it is simply a choice not to ask a question that is asked in an official language of this country? Now, I think the member confuses two things. Now, one is there's no question that uh, te reo is an official, official language in this country. The fact that it is not uh, a language that is uh, shared with any fluency by now, a large number of members of the House is neither here nor there. Uh, the use of it is permitted. When it comes to the answer of a question, uh, it's nothing new in this. It has always been the case. In fact, uh, 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 Speaker's ruling 1994 makes it very clear uh, the, the, the parameters for ministers able to uh, decide not to answer a question. The, um, uh, Honourable Kerry McAnulty. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The concern I have here is uh, you're quite right to point out 1994, but also 1993 says that where a question is clear, there's an expectation that ministers answer it. It's unfortunate how this has played out, however, um, where there was the words point of order used. It's been ruled that it was a comment, but nevertheless, the response that was part of that suggested that that minister, perhaps others, will not answer questions if they are asked in te reo. Now, I'm not sure that it's useful to continue that, so I wonder if you would reflect on it, perhaps watch over it again, because it would be an unfortunate reflection on the House if that was what suggested, backed up by the suggestion that ministers don't have to answer, we shouldn't go down that track. I take the, the, the uh, member's point on board and uh, uh, will, in fact, uh, reflect a little further on it. It's one of the penances you do in this job, is reflecting on these things. So uh, I'll go ahead with that and uh, come up with where it might be. Uh, the Honourable Shane Jones, point of order. Uh, just following on from the Speaker who's resumed his seat, Mr Speaker, the reality is that there was a slight delay in the translation, reflective of the rudimentary nature of the Māori language and my ability to make it sound more sophisticated in English. Well, I'm sure that's a wonderful piece of... Uh, so it, it is. I'm not talking about his one. Uh, speaking, yeah. speaking to it? Yeah, I'm just, I was just congratulating on myself. Congratulations inside of a point of order. It's quite <laughs> remarkable. <laughs> Honourable um, uh, Kieran McAnulty. Thank you, and I thank the Minister for his uh, contribution. However, the issue arose also from the suggestion from the Honourable Grant Robertson that uh, Rāwari Waititi be given the opportunity to repeat the question that all members in the House therefore would have notice and would be able to listen to the um, uh, translation. However, the response was that ministers don't need to provide an answer and now we are where we are. No, th there was two parts to the, the point. So I, I answered the first part. If that is the... the uh, uh, if, if the member wants to ask the question again, then I think we can progress by doing so. Point of order... Uh, uh, point of order uh, with Debbie respect, uh, Etapika. Um, just again to seek clarity from this party's perspective and the 70 per cent of our population who are under the age of 40 who kōrero te reo Māori, if we need to bring about a different practice, because this is a practice that we've had since we came in three years ago, to Uruoa had, um, that we've had to party Māori and Joy and other members across the House, is the decision today, and it may need to go out for reflection for the business committee, that we need to indicate when we're transferring language, or is there going to be a different set of protocols applied no, around the world? No, that's not a decision that's been made here at all. I've said that I'll reflect on how we might make things move more, work more smoothly, because you might notice that most of the people in this House are not reflective of that 17 per cent in age, if nothing else. Uh, and so uh, if we are to, to get, a, get answers to questions, we need to have something that, that works, and that's certainly my desire. Marama Davidson, point of last point of order on this matter. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It's just in relation to 1993, our Speaker's rulings. Yep. It's very clear that where the question is clear, there is an expectation that ministers will answer it unless they consider it not to be in the public interest to do so. So I'm just seeking clarification 
on uh, whether it is not in the public interest or what is the ruling that you are calling to no. allow ministers to have that choice? So the, ru the ruling stands, but it's not for the Speaker to determine uh, the, the interpretation of that ruling. So now, to, do we have another supplementary on this question? Rauri Waititi. Just for clarification, uh, yeah. Mr Speaker, and your guidance. Is it uh, a repeat of the first question, or are you saying that I have to move on to the next question? Uh, no, look, I'll tell you what, uh, you make the choice. Is that okay? Sorry, because that's, we've, you're going to ask the first question again if you want, and that won't uh, cost you your, your supplements, uh, sub, subsequent supplementaries. Okay. Yeah. First supplementary question. Hea ha tō whakautu, ki ngā rōpū e mahi ana o ngā tamariki rawakore, e karangana ke heke te whika o ngā tamariki rawakore, mā te pēne, mā te hiki i te whiwhinga pūtea, mā te ngāwari i te hoko kai, me te māwiwi ārai. If we're going to help all those uh, people who are working with the poor, and the first thing we should do is uplift our economy and leave no, leave no one out. And that is the purpose and the uh, focus of this government, uh, that uh, with the reforms that are going to go ahead, running a far more successful economy and ensuring that no one is left out in housing, education and in health and in terms of infrastructural access, then people will be uplifted. Not like the disaster we had, where there were all those tens and tens and tens of thousands utterly forgotten and the homeless went up by 35 per cent. Rauri Waititi. He aha ngā kaupapa here o tēnei kāwana. Mō te hiki i te whiwhinga pūtea, kia ngā wari te utu i ngā pire, te kai me te penehini i mua i te krihimeti. Well, the first thing that's going to happen is that in parts of the economy, the cost of petrol are going to go down because the unfair charging that was imposed by a previous government for no purpose while roading was a mess. Well, you are going to hold us out because well, you won't have to hold us out because unlike that member, we keep our promises. We don't just make them and break them one after the other. We keep them. So that, 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 those pricing should go down. Depends, of course, on all international circumstances of supply chains to this country. And whilst I'm at it, they left this country's fuel supply in a desperate circumstance when they wound back Marsden Point. We could be closed down within three days because of their short-sightedness and Megan Woods is the person who never enacted in the national interest, just allowed the, um, the, the, the foot refinery, so critical to this country in an emergency, not to be operating any longer. And on the bigger question of uh, cost of living before Christmas, well, there's only two weeks to go. We're going to do the best we can to signal to the market and through the Groceries Commissioner a fairer pricing regime going forward.